Hey guys, Mandy here from Human 2.0. Today we're talking about knee strengthening exercises for older adults and seniors. So these exercises are very basic. If you're a beginner to fitness or mobility, or even if you're just, you know, someone who wants to have stronger knees, these exercises are for you. You don't need much in the way of equipment. The only things you will need is ideally a post and one step, so something that is at, maybe at the bottom of your staircase, and a little tiny bit of wall space just to lean up against, okay? So those are the only things that you actually need to do these exercises. So get in a space that you can do those things, grab a little bit of water, and then we'll get started. So the first exercise we're going to do is to help you learn to track your knees properly when you go to sit down or go into a squat or bend at the knees in any way. So ideally, when you, when you do squat, you want your knees and your kneecaps to track out over the outside edge of your foot, or maybe these last two toes, that's where you want your, your knees to kind of track out in that direction. So if you don't practice doing that and making sure that they're going in the right direction, when you do a squat or anything like that, you might default to you know, incorrect movement. So lots of people might, their knees might cave in a little bit. They might really go out to the side too much. They could do all kinds of weird things that you don't even think about as you go through your day and you do your stuff. So fitness and doing your workouts and training is about trying to make sure that you're moving properly so that it's the safest for you and that you're um, really strengthening the body in the way that it should be strengthened. So first thing is, it's just gonna be called a supported squat. And this is where your post is gonna come in handy. So I like to hold on to the post. Ideally, I would hold on to it from the end here um, where it's square on my hand, but just so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna hang on to the post just to give me support. And then I'm gonna think about there being a chair behind me, okay? Like I'm gonna go and sit into a chair, but I don't wanna just flop down. I wanna go really slowly and just sink down maybe, you know, I don't know, a quarter of a squat. And you're just going to hang out here. So it's a supported squat hold. And you want to think about the position of everything in your body. So how are things turned on and how are they functioning? So like I said to you, your knees should be tracking out over the outside edge of your foot or the last two toes. So if you look down, you can kind of see that that's in line there. The other thing to think about is to keep your feet turned on. So your feet aren't just sitting on the floor. They're actually sort of gripping the floor. It's almost as if you're like a monkey and you have, you know, monkey feet. It's very small um, activation. You really don't think about it too much. But your feet being turned on will help you all the way up the chain. So making sure your knees go in the right position, making sure your hips are doing what they're supposed to, all of it. So you just kind of want to grip the floor a little bit so that you're, you have a nice arch there. If you don't have an arch in your feet, you can sort of make one if you just kind of grab the ground with your toes. And then you're just going to sink down just a little bit. So my feet are turned on. I'm trying to sort of grab the floor with my toes. My knees are out over the outside edge of my foot. And I have my chest up fairly upright. And my bum is aiming backwards as if there's a chair behind me because that's sort of what you're practicing. You're practicing as if you were going to sit down in a chair and then come back up. So I like to do this one. You can do it for reps. We can hold it for a bit. So we're going to do that. That's what we're going to do. You're going to grab onto your post. You can follow along with me now. Gripping the floor with your feet, sinking back as if you're going to sit in a chair, but not too low, and then come back up. And let's just do a couple reps like that. There's two and come back up, and three, let's do two more, and four, and on the last one, let's hold it, okay, so you're not, you're not sitting down very far, you're holding your position, and you look down just to check the alignment of everything, chest is up, so the post kind of keeps you from leaning forward, it gives you a little bit of support. You can think about these other things, like where are your knees going? Are your feet turned on? And you're just gonna hold it here. You know, maybe work for five, 10 seconds, up to 30 seconds, even up to a minute, and then pushing up. 
and then just shaking it out. So that is a supported squat or squat hold. So just work on that. And again, any time throughout the day, you're just waiting for something. You know, you're waiting for the water to boil on the stove. Get yourself set up and practice your movement. Okay, so we're not, this one, we're not trying to drive the knees out over the toes too much. We're thinking about sitting back, like we would actually sit down in a chair. However, it's very important that you get a full range of motion at the knee joint. And if you are going to sink all the way down to the floor, there are going to be times when your knee has to come out over your foot. So that's what we're going to practice next. Okay, so this next exercise is called a modified shrimp squat. So a shrimp squat is basically just a one-legged squat. You just stand on one foot and you bend your knee and ideally you would bring this opposite knee all the way to the floor. But we're not doing all of that today. We're only going to do a part of that. And I'm going to use my post just for balance, okay? So same thing we did with the last squat. You want to think about turning on your feet, okay? So you have, you're kind of gripping the floor a little bit with your toes. And you can see that I'm working out barefoot. There's a reason for that. Because if you have your shoes on, you can't pay attention to those things. And it's important that you have a solid base with your foot. So I, I would recommend barefoot training. If it's safe for you to do that, then do that. Take your socks off, walk around the house without your socks or your shoes on, and just think about what your toes are actually doing. Okay, so you're standing on one foot, your toes are activated. You know where your knee is supposed to go. So even if you were just sitting back, especially if you're coming down lower and your knee is going out over your toes, you really want them to track out over the outside edge of your foot. So you think about these last two toes, that's where you want your knee to go. So the other foot is lifted, I'm just using this for balance. And I'm going to look down because I'm going to watch my knee. Okay, and I want to bend the knee just enough that I can see that maybe it's covering those last two toes. I can't see them anymore. I can feel my knees clicking a little bit. It needs this work. Okay, it's making weird noises, and I'm going to come back up. So don't worry if your knee's clicking or anything like that. Sometimes that happens. If there's pain, that's something different. Okay, and that might be something to check out with your doctor. But we're just doing a little knee bend, and I want to push that knee forward out over those last two toes. Hold it for a couple seconds, and then come back up. Okay, let's try it again. Let's see if you can sink just a little bit lower. If you can only bend the knee a tiny little bit, that's fine because you're working toward getting lower and stronger and that's what you're going to be working toward. If you can't do it in the beginning, that's fine. So you're going to push your knee out over those outside toes. Now I can see my knee is past my foot and that's good. I just want to keep it here and then come all the way up. And then just shake that leg out. So I would do it a couple times on each side, maybe once on one side, then on the other side, depending on how strong your legs feel. Um, and then you just alternate or do one side and the other at any time of day. It's, it's all good. Just add that in. So that one, you're really trying to push the knee out over the toes. You're not sitting back so much. You're pushing the knee out over the toes. So that is called the modified shrimp squat. The next exercise is called... Uh, it's called a step up, but it's really a step down. So we're just going to call it like a step down for, it just makes more sense to call it that. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to stand on one staircase, on one step. Now this might even be too high for you. So if it is, you can always use a, like a really big, uh, thick book that's maybe, you know, I don't know, four inches high. You can always bring it down a level, but for me, I'm just going to use this and I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to come up on top of this step. I'm going to use my hands to hold on to this post and I'm going to flex this foot, the one that's free, that's just hanging out over the edge of the, the stair. Now, thinking about gripping the step with my toes, I'm going to think about what this kneecap is doing. What direction is it pointing? I'm going to try, holding onto the railing, to sink down and just tap my heel to the floor, okay? Very slow, very deliberate, tap my heel to the floor. And this knee, the one that I'm standing on, is going to do what we just did in that modified shrimp squat. It's going to track out, and it's going to 
go out over top of those toes, and that's what you want it to do. But now we have another focus. We're trying to tap our heel down on the opposite foot. Okay, so it's just a little tap down, tap, and come back up. So you don't want to just bang it down. If you're banging it down, then the step is too high. You should be able to, holding on to something, just feather tap that heel and lift it back up. Nice and light, you could even hold it here and then come back up, okay? So we'll just call that a tap down. And for that one, maybe a few reps on each side, maybe three, five, eight reps per side, turn it around to the other side. And that's a really good one too for building up strength um, through the inside thigh and the, and the quad, and then making sure that that kneecap is tracking in the proper direction. So the next exercise we're doing today is mainly for your glutes and your hamstrings. And you might say to me, well, aren't we working on the knees, Mandy? And I would say, yes, we are. But part of having strong knees means not only being able to work the knee through a full range of motion, but it means strengthening all the muscles around the knee and that contribute to the knee doing what it's supposed to do. So one of those things is the hamstring, which is here, right up from the back of the knee, and your glutes, because they're all kind of you know, connected in one piece. And the reason why we're going to work that is because most people are weaker there. Lots of people have strong quads, and that's all good. But if you have strong quads and you have weak hamstrings and weak glutes, then there's an imbalance. And as soon as you have an imbalance, that's when you have problems with your joints, whether it's your knees, your hips, whatever. So you want to strengthen those things. So for me, knowing that most people are weak in the hamstrings and glutes, I tend for myself to work the back part of my body maybe twice as often as I would work the front part of my body, just to make sure things are balanced, okay? And I've had knee uh, surgery in the past because of that reason. Lots of women in particular have strong quads, but they're weak at the back of the leg and in the glutes. So that's what we're gonna work on now. And this is a very simple exercise. You can use your post. You don't need to use a post with this one. You can use a wall, whatever. But you're gonna stand up nice and tall and you're just gonna put one foot to the back. Okay, so point your toes, gripping the floor with that, the, the foot that's on the floor, holding onto your post. Good posture, so that means I don't want to arch my back. I want to keep my, my abs and everything is kind of activated just a little bit, which means my ribs will be coming down. I don't have my ribs flaring out like that. And for this one, I like to put my hand on my body specifically to make sure that I don't arch my back, okay? And then all I'm gonna do is just lift my foot and then tap it back down. Point my toe, lift my foot, point, and tap it back down. And I do, I don't know, three reps to 10 reps, depending on how strong I feel. It's just a little tiny lift, maybe, you know, six inches off the ground and down. So other things to think about here, is you're not opening up through the hip because that will allow you to, you know, lift a little bit higher. It's a different exercise. We're really trying to target the glutes and the hamstrings. So you just wanna lift straight back and hold and tap. So it could be reps. It could be one, two, three, like that. Or it could be slower with a pause. One, two, three. Or it can just be a hold and lift and hold. Now, if you're just holding, make sure you're breathing. Sometimes we forget and we hold our breath if we're just doing an isometric exercise, but make sure you keep breathing and then down. And just from that little movement, I can already feel that in my glutes and my hamstrings, okay? So you'd obviously do both sides. And uh, again, you can do that anywhere. I do that if I'm standing in the kitchen, you know, filling the sink with, or the sink with water, or waiting for the microwave, or standing at the bus stop, or anything like that. Just these little movements that nobody really is even gonna pay attention to you doing them but you can do them safely and they just adds to strengthening things that might be weak. Okay, so that is your little leg lift to the back for your hamstrings and your glutes. Okay, so the last exercise we're gonna do is sort of in keeping with strengthening the muscles that um, surround the knee or contribute to the knee working properly. Uh, and that is 
what we're going to do this time is the front of the leg. So your shin, okay, this is something that we hardly ever work on. But if you have stronger calves, which almost all of us have a stronger calf than we would have um, the muscles along the front of the leg at the bottom, then you have that imbalance that I was talking about. So it's very simple to work this. You're just going to stand against a wall. Now, if it's hard for you, you want to bring your legs in closer. And you would just do one at a time. So I'm just going to hang out here. I've got a little bit of a lean against the wall. And I can just lift one foot and the other, one foot and the other. And I'm just keeping my legs pretty straight. I have a little bit of a bend in my knee, but I'm not trying to bend at the knee. I'm just trying to lift those toes off the floor. So one at a time, close to the wall would be level one. You can move out a little bit. Okay, so you're further away from the wall. And then lift two at a time. Lift, hold, lower, lift, and lower. I have two dogs here that are thinking they see something outside. I'm not sure what that is. Lift and lower. So I sort of bring my toes up a little bit to start and then lift right up onto my heels. A little bit of a bend at the knee. You can see that. So lift and lower. Again, one, the other, both, whatever works for you. So the ways to make it harder would be to move away from the wall a little bit, do two at a time, hold it for longer, this kind of thing, okay? So simple exercises, all of them, but you can make them harder or easier by slightly increasing the range of motion, slightly increasing the, the distance from things, holding things for a longer time, doing more repetitions of things. That's the way that you make these exercises harder. But they are doable anywhere, anytime, as long as you have something to lean against or a post to hang on to. And it all goes into helping you strengthen your knees and keeping them, um, you know, safer. I wouldn't say it's going to prevent injury altogether. But if you practice good movement skills, then you're more likely to prevent injury in the future. Because when you're, you know, just going around and you go to sit down or you go onto one foot, you've trained your body to move in a certain way that is safer than it would be otherwise if you just didn't train it. Okay, so those are exercises for uh, older adults and seniors specifically to use for targeting, strengthening your knees and keeping them healthy. Hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time.